Andreas Trebelev, Professor of Finance. One of our goals today is to recall what we have learned in those wonderful finance sessions together. And if you remember when I said goodbye to you in our last session, I mentioned that the best way to um, study, the best way to learn, is to teach other people. Because at the end of the day, senior executives, leaders are teachers. And the way you teach your, your colleagues or your subordinates really shows the way you lead. And what I'm going to do today is to share some major takeaways that we taught, that, that we uh, did with you together. First of all is the main principles of finance. I hope you remember that the first main principle of finance is that cash is king. And the way to remember it is that your professor is originally from Russia, so cash is czar is also fine. The second main principle of finance is sooner is better, followed by safer is better. A little bit more subtle, we also discussed that systematic risk is a very important in finance, that risk is systematic. And you have to think about systematic risks when you make any financial decisions. So one way is to explain to your colleagues the differences between systematic on the one hand and let's say firm specific risks and how different they are. I really do recommend you to think about the ways to bring uh, the Airbus A380 case in your finance discussions with your colleagues. And most importantly, remember that when we discussed the A380 case, it was about how to make big decisions. And when you make big decisions, then you can rely on financial models only to the extent that assumptions, that the underlying assumptions are valid, are correct. If assumptions are rubbish, then the outcome of these financial models would be rubbish. And therefore the responsibility of you and other senior executives in your firm is to ensure that the assumptions behind any financial models, behind any investment decision that you're making is valid, that these assumptions hold. And therefore it's up to you to ask great questions, to ask probing questions when these investment and financial models are brought to your attention. Another important topic that we talked with you was about how to manage biases in financial and investment and overall business decision making. If you recall, you did a um, survey where you answered a number of questions and then in class we revealed your aggregate answers and we found out that we're all just normal people. Think about various biases that we discussed. If you remember the handouts describe these biases one by one. And as you come to the next bias, think about the examples from your professional and personal experiences, about how you interacted, how you encountered this bias, what you did about it, and maybe how you improved in the past several months. I also want you to remember a friend that I brought to one of the uh, classes and that friend is the piggy bank. If you remember, we played the piggy bank game and somebody um, won and then subsequently therefore lost, I think like a thousand bucks, something around that. So made me, uh, made me very rich so I could go and buy a very expensive bottle of wine. And we've learned that first of all, how it's cold. This is the reason why uh, everybody who is playing this game with me is always losing. It's called the winner's curse. And also how this winner's curse is important in almost all competitive financial and investment decisions. If you recall, when you bid in an auction on any item, for example, for example, in the merge and acquisition auction type situation, you have to ask yourself, whether you are in the piggy bank situation, in the winner's curse situation, that if you win, maybe you will overpay. And the reason you will overpay is because you overestimate the benefit of this company, or of this product, of this object to you. So every single time you make an investment decision, an important investment decision, my request to you is to go back to, the, to piggy bank and to think carefully whether you're in this situation or not. One of the important decisions that we discussed at great length with you was the M&A decision. Whether we 
uh, and companies should go and buy other companies? And if so, at what price? And what kind of typical mistakes people make in the M&A process? The case that we used with you is the open lane case, where the open lane executives, the open lane board, had to consider whether to accept an acquisition offer from a competitor, or whether to go alone, independent, and plan for its uh, IPO, maybe several years down the road. And one of the issues that I emphasized during that class, and the issue that I see executives struggle with every single day, again and again, and the issue that I would like to bring to your attention once again, is the issue of conflicts of interests and the issue of preferences. If you remember, Open Lane had eight board members. Eight board members who had to vote on what course of action to take. And each of them had different preferences. And their preferences were shaped not only by their fiduciary duty as board members, but also by the total portfolio of responsibilities that these people had. We had a venture capitalist on the board who cared not only about the outcome, but also about the return to the total portfolio. We had other directors on the board who cared not only about the outcome of the specific deal, but, to the out but about the outcome of uh, his personal portfolio, his personal wealth. So every single time when you think about collaborating with others or making decisions jointly with others, my recommendation back then was, and still is, is to think very carefully, is to ask yourself a question, what kind of preferences these people have? Typically, people assume that everybody around us has the same preferences as we have. And that's typically a mistaken assumption. In most cases, an open lane just one uh, example that you can, go, you can go back to and reconsider, in most cases, people have different preferences. Their utility for action is different. And as a result, the outcomes of negotiations, of board decisions, of any group decisions, very often is controversial, very often goes against uh, some people's uh, opinions. And if you've been in that situation, just reconsider this again. And if you remember, I gave you some specific takeaways for how to think about this, how to approach different people. Please do remember the perhaps major takeaway from finance, that timing is everything, and that in any financial decision, there's a lot of risk, and there's a lot of luck involved. And uh, my favorite example is the one that I gave you, uh, just, just when we're saying goodbye to each other, the example of GM bankruptcy, if you remember, General Motors bankruptcy, that the bet that I won with another professor, but I lost. I won because GM did go bankrupt, but unfortunately I lost because GM went, uh, went bankrupt the day after uh, the deadline of our beat. And I lost a bottle of wonderful Chateau Margot as a result. So remember, timing is everything. We are going to lose many bottles of wine.